In fact, as that was happening, you had Robert Knight, the photographer, mm. and they were making a documentary about his work and his involvement with you. Yeah, and those things are very, very important. I, I thought it was really cool at the time. I didn't really realize how uh, pivotal that was. A lot of people are still like that. That documentary was on television or I forget what it was, what was called. called? Uh, Rock Prophecies. Rock Prophecies. And yeah. it was really cool. I mean, it was. This guy who had photographed Jimi Hendrix before it was Jimi Hendrix and Zeppelin before there was Zeppelin. And honestly, he was just like most people who break through and really become huge in the industry. He was all about passion. He was like, I love the rock show and I own a camera. So at the time, he was the only one with a camera. Everyone has cameras now. But in the early 70s, he was the only guy that owned a camera because they're expensive and they were an acquired thing. So he was the local photographer. So everyone let him in. He, every rock star wanted to meet him because they love getting their photo taken. And so he met Hendrix and Clapton and everyone. Mm. So he became the rock photographer. That was Robert Knight, the rock and roll photographer. So he became well known for prophesizing success because he was there. And he would look at him and go, I think that guy's going to make it. He could have said it about everyone. And, and if someone's going to fucking make it, you know, <laughs> like, because he was there. So that was the, that's the thing. You have to be there. You have to be there. And but the point of that docker was that they, they said, we're going to make a film about you. Name a couple of acts that you think are going to be the next yeah, big thing. Yeah, and he picked us. And yeah. you were one of those. And it was, there was us. There was another kid named Ty Dal Bryant. Panic at the Disco was in it. They actually blew up before the film came out. The, we, our thing was really well tandemed with it. The film came out and we were just getting known. And then as the film got notoriety, we... Because it happened had, just as the, the free, free hugs thing was happening. Yeah. yeah. And it, and it was managed great. to climax when you did the Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah. and it, it was really great that he was there for that. It's great that we have such a well edited, you know, thing of a, a, a caption of that. Um, we would have had our own little photos and things, but really, I can't remember any of that period. It was, it was a whirlwind, <laughs> dude. It was insane. And was to some extent, it shows that you were living on a shoestring oh, back then, yeah. um, and doing these uh, exhibition gigs or showcase gigs. That you know, everyone says you're great. Let us know when you got traction. Yeah. And finally, that the pre thing gave you traction. Yeah, no, the, the catchphrase from all the labels was, uh, you're great, but you're missing something. Mm -hmm. And we go, well, what? We go, we don't know. Call <laughs> us when you find it. So then I made the free hugs clip and they fucking called, man. <laughs> so, uh, they and that blew up, for those who don't know, that blew up like overnight. Mm. Over uh, the weekend. It literally was three days. I remember I was managing your website at that time. Mm -hmm. It fell over. Yeah. And I had your manager calling me. What's happened to the website? Uh, yeah. We've got to get it. I was out of dinner with people. He's calling me from the LA. We've got to get it back up. Why? Because this monster thing is happening. <coughs> and the servers who were running it just shut it down because of getting too much traffic. Yeah, it couldn't handle the traffic. Um, yeah, that was... Uh, we and within a week, on you're on 60 Friday. minutes and, and all the rest Within of a it. week, they call, everyone called that week. Mm. I think that, that, that two-month period before Christmas was just no sleep, just, just going everywhere. Doing Oprah was really when I was like, oh shit, okay, this is actually <laughs> happening. Um, because they called and said, we want you on the show and here's your plane ticket and here's, you know, just show up and you'll see Oprah in the flesh. I was like, what? And then ironically, I met Tom Morello on the flight. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking like, oh, you know, this is a weird free hug thing. It's going to be a fad. It'll be 15 minutes. Ultimately, it was a, 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 a it was, a, that video wasn't about the music and the band. It was the video. When the band did blow up and you had, uh, when, when free hugs happened, yeah. you know, and you're on the Tonight Show and you've done open all of this, what was that whirlwind like for you? Um, it was a blur. Uh, there wasn't a lot of sleep. My mentality about it, it was, it was, um, I'm trying to think of the word. It was, I had to live, uh, I had, I had to put my money where my mouth was basically at that point, because I had always said when we were over there for the year and a half to nearly two years before anyone gave a shit about the band, I was like, I'm going to work consistently every day. I'm not going to let my spirits get down because it's going to be one thing that kicks it in. And then everyone's going to have their eyes on us for one moment. Mm. And if we don't deliver in that moment, they're going to look away. So you have to be ready. Be ready to capitalize. Be ready to capitalize. Be ready to play the show at the drop of a dime. Be great. Be experienced. Be on. Be well, the advantage was you had spent two and a half years playing. We haven't played live much. No, no. I, it, when, in the two and a half... You mean in Australia? Well, you had... Played a lot here, hmm. but you spent two and a half years in LA not playing much. No, not playing much. So you're a bit all. rusty live. We were well, no, we weren't rusty as a band. We were tight, but we, in terms of because you've been recording. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were, uh, we were tight as a band, and I, we had all the ambition in the world. But the actual experience, no, there was. Yeah. There's after I'd done 500 shows, it was a different world for me. 
Um, but it was that thing of like, I just know, and I was like, we literally, we just grabbed and ho- held on. And it was like, we need you to do this, we need you to do that. I was like, yep, yeah, I can do it because I'm ready, I'm prepared, I've been working for two years for this moment. And this is coming from the record company? No, this is coming from the world. This is, this is Oprah, Jay Leno, the record label, the, the morning radio station, everything. Everything, they were like, can you do this? Yes, I'm ready, I can do it. I can show up at 6 a.m. and bang, bang, bang out all the press that you need and play a gig at the end of the night and get on a plane to go to somewhere else and do this thing and take a meeting and make a video and do a documentary thing about this and do a tweet or whatever the hell was available at the time and upload a new MySpace thing. I can do, I, I literally am standing there like a snake oil salesman. I will do whatever the fuck it takes. And I remember if you, if you see that Oprah show, um, she's about to wrap up the show. Oh God, I know, I know, I know. She's about to wrap up the I'm show. Such a whore. And she neglects to mention that you actually created the video yeah. and wrote the song. And you, you once. She was a pro. I got, I got a lot of respect for her or, that I already had, obviously. But so you, you, you pulled her aside during the commercial break. I pulled or her aside on the, in the commercial breaks because I said, Oprah, I've got this. Um, look, the, the free hug. The next step for the free hugs thing is this. Um, Glo- we were trying to do this global uh, moment of free hugs, like everyone's going to hug each other on multicam from different cities, and it was a pipe dream. But mostly I just wanted to tell the world, hey, I'm in a band, and the band made the song, and here's the band. And you can check it out on this website. So I said to her... Because she was all about the hugs, the hugs and not the so much about the song. And, and I was there, but they didn't want to interview me, they wanted to interview him. Totally yeah. obvious, fair enough, no, no ego on it. All I wanted was, I want people to know my band. So in that break, I said, can I, can I have, can I just say this one thing? And she said, sure. So she's wrapping up. She turns to me and says, and also there's something about a global hug. And I took a deep breath and I just went, yeah, there's this thing about a global hug. I'm going to be simulcasting with this and this and that. Because the band actually wrote the song and I made the video for the thing. And it's, you can, it's going to be available on the website from this day to this day. And the website is sickpuppies.net. And I got it all out in one breath. She couldn't interrupt me. <laughs> she couldn't. And I swear, the moment that I ran out of steam, she went, well, that's great. That's the end of our show. And she just, she <laughs> swooped in perfectly calm and like real experienced. And I could tell in her face, there was this moment like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like that look of like, you, it's not about, like she knew exactly what I was doing, but I got it in. Because I mean, I'd flown there. We'd, we'd gone through all this stuff for that moment. It's all about that one. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know that the whole, everything that you're working on, it's two years of work, literally could have just been for that one thirty seconds. Because that's the biggest daytime TV show in history. And I've got my mouth saying whatever the fuck I want for 10 seconds, what am I gonna say? I gotta get, I gotta get the words out. I gotta get, people have to hear it. They have to hear the name of the website, the name of the song, it's available on iTunes or wherever. They, they gotta, you gotta do it. You have Mention to do the it. Band. Cause she do hadn't it. done that properly. No, she no. hadn't, but it wasn't her prerogative. It was yeah. my prerogative. And That's I swear to God, if it was yeah. any other situation, I probably would have bitched out. I'd be like, well, but it's like, you gotta just man up and just, Get it, do it. You have to get it done. Figure out how to do it. Even if you piss her off and she never wants you on the show again, I'm like, chances of me being on Oprah. Oh, it's like the the doors. It's like we've done the show. Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly it.